Broadcasting live on the UnitedWest.org AM radio network and simulcasting on DirecTV, iHeartRadio, Roku, and the World Wide Web, this is Enemies of the State with Tom Trento. All right, here we are, Wednesday, the 7th, September. Man, deja vu. Seems like I've done this several times already today, but we are live right now. Noon on the East Coast, Enemies of the State, the United West. Two shows, today, Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday. Our title, The Donald Meets The Jesus in Detroit. You do not want to miss this. We're going to take a look at Donald Trump's efforts in the black community in the United States to win those hard Democrat votes over to him. Will he be successful? Is it a waste of time? Stay tuned the next two days. But as we came up on the noon hour today, we got some breaking news. The Reverend Jesse Jackson, a guy you have not seen for a while. The Reverend Jesse Jackson, not once J. Mark Gamble. I know it's amazing. But twice, twice he praises and endorses Donald Trump, check out this exclusive video. I do want to express thanks to you, Donald Trump, for being with us tonight. Uh, We need your building skills, uh, your uh, gusto, um, your rent package for people on Wall Street who represent diversity. And uh, we thank you for coming tonight. Let's give Donald Trump a big hand. (laughs) A big hand for Donald Trump. And so aside from all of, of his style uh, and his um, pizzazz, he's a serious person who's an effective builder of buildings with a builder of people. Last year he was a part of our workshop, of our panel workshop on what are the challenges and opportunities. And so this, a year later, Donald Trump, uh, for a few minutes, challenges and opportunities to embrace the underserved communities. Donald Trump. This is amazing. It's really amazing. I will tell you a large percentage of the people, and especially in construction, that are building these great jobs are black and minorities, and I'm very proud of it. We have uh, close to 25%, and I think the number's going up. And they do a great job. There are no better builders than we have in New York, and a big percentage of that is black and minority folks. So I just want to thank everybody in the room for being here. I look forward to some questions, and then I don't know how we're ever going to leave this building today, because if you look outside, it is terrible. But we'll figure a way. There's always a way. And thank you, and thank you, Jesse, and congratulations. Wow. Wow. This is amazing. And the most amazing thing is Trump gets younger by the day. I know. He, lo- he looks a lot better than he did Yesterday, years ago. Yesterday, he looked 20 <laughs> years older than he does today. Oh, hold, was, on, hold, hold on. T- 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 oh, Tom, you know what? I just looked the date of these. This is quite amazing. This is, this is like 10 years ago. No, 20 years 20 ago. 20 years ago. 1998, 1990, almost 20 years ago, 17, 18 years. And, you know, this is where the hypocrisy of the left <laughs> comes in. Here's Donald Trump with Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson tripping over himself, saying very nice things. And if you know Jesse Jackson, he scams people, does all of this. Yeah. Uh, but if, he, if he's trying to play you, he's not going to talk nicely about you. He spoke very, very nicely about Donald Trump, honestly, and said, look, his character's a little different, his style's a little different. I wonder, Mark, if we have any video about Jesse Jackson maybe endorsing our current president, yeah, President I think we Barack might have a clip Obama. of that. Do we think, have something? Yeah, yeah I think Let's we have a clip of that. Let's check Jesse out Jesse Jackson endorsing our current President Barack Obama. And, uh, I'll get down to thank people on this faith base. What the <laughs> is that? Sit the rock. And, uh, I'll get down to thank people on this faith base. What the <laughs> is that? Jesse Jackson wants to cut Obama's nuts <laughs> off. Uh, and, and he, he fuses, he dishes out all this praise and, and uh, gratitude for what Donald Trump is doing in the, if you listen carefully, underserved communities. What hypocrisy on the left for I them know. today 
to say that Donald Trump is a racist. Unbelievable. I know. It's just this manufactured racism that they do all the time. Anybody who's a Republican, conservative, you know, we're redneck, racist, can't think, can't vote. You know, we're, we're just drooling little Neanderthals who, who hate black people and everything. So When you, when you lose the ability, uh, and for a lot of reasons, if you followed our show, when you, when you move into the left's uh, epistemology, the way you think, you lose the critical analytical capabilities to figure out what's right, what's wrong. So you move subjectively, and when you hear a statement that you can't deal with factually but you don't like it, you respond emotionally and, um, and uh, 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 vi viscerally, angrily. And, and that's what you see happening now, uh, painting, as you said, everybody as a racist. But let's take a look today at um, Donald Trump in this, uh, this church in Detroit. And I checked the church out. It's a real evangelical church. It's a charismatic church. You mean it's not a fake church like the press is no, it's, it's not a, it's not a left-wing make-believe, uh, you know, Jesus is the feeling of in the world. This is, we believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. We believe he died. We oh, it's a fake it. church. It's a I, fake church. It's a real church. <laughs> um, well, I'm talking from the left. It's a fake church. That's a fake church. Yeah, because it's, pre it's preaching God and Jesus. That's a fake that's church a, uh, well, because a real church preaches abortion and gay rights because that's that the real stuff. church. Right. All the right. real stuff. Yeah. So, so. Um, uh, these folks in Detroit invited uh, Donald Trump, and uh, he went there. And let's let's just look. And look, uh, he has a speech. It's written. He's more scripted these days. Uh, these are every, every, you know every camera in the world is on it. Let's just spend a few moments. I want you to get a feel for being in a black church. I've been in many black churches. They are a different experience <laughs> than being in your you know Presbyterian church. They're a lot of fun. They're, of fun. <laughs> they're alive, man. They come alive. Let they're me singing tell you. and everything. Yeah. You go to O'Neill Dozier's church in, uh, no, rock in and, Pompano, and, and you are alive. <laughs> you can feel the spirit there. Let's just see Donald Trump. Now he comes from the very modest Presbyterian, uh, uh, evangelical, very proper, and uh, this, uh, this ain't a black church. They're singing and dancing and talking. But watch how he handles himself. Just get a feel. I want you to get a feel and listen carefully for just a couple of minutes. Thank you. That's so nice. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, that's so nice. And Bishop Jackson, I want to thank you and Dr. Jackson. And you have some voice, I have to say. Incredible, and some spirit, some spirit, true, talent. Thank you. Well, I just uh, wrote this the other day, knowing I'd be here, and uh, I mean it from the heart. And uh, I'd like to just read it, and I think you'll understand it maybe better than I do in certain ways. For centuries, the African-American church has been the conscience of our country. So true. It's from the pews and pulpits and Christian teachings of black churches all across this land that the civil rights movement lifted up its soul and lifted up the soul of our nation. It's from these pews that our nation has been inspired toward a better moral character, a deeper concern for mankind, and spirit of charity and unity that binds us all together. And we are bound together, and I see that today. This, was, this has been an amazing day for me. The African-American faith community has been one of God's greatest gifts to America and to its people. There is perhaps no action our leaders can take that would do more to heal our country and support our people than to provide a greater platform to the black churches and churchgoers. You do right every day by your community and your families. You raise children in the light of God. I will always support your church, always, and defend your right to worship. So important. I am here today to listen to your message and I hope my presence here will also help your voice to reach new audiences in our country 
and many of these audiences desperately need your spirit and your thought. I can tell you that. All right, now that's just a couple of minutes in the beginning of a 14-minute speech, and we want everybody, uh, particularly Christians, because sadly in Florida we have at least a million Christians who are uh, planning on sitting out this election. As we know, 2012, we lost here by 73,000 votes. If Christians sit this election out, the most critical swing state in the country, if Christians sit it out because of some stupid reason, then Hillary Clinton is going to determine your, the future for your kids with the Supreme Court and on and on and on. But uh, go watch this 14-minute um, Grace Ministry Church in Detroit, 14-minute speech. We're going to show you a little bit of the close in a second. But I, I want to give you a little insight into the psychology of uh, Donald Trump. Um, I, I don't know the man well. I've uh, been to his, his club uh, many times as a guest, we've ho held some events there, the United West. He's spoken at one of our events. And, um, but I do know enough about him that he's, he's uh, virtually accountable to no one. He owns a private business run by his family very tightly. He's accountable to his family, essentially. So he lives a very unscripted life. And he has lived that, and you can see the, the foils and foibles and failures in his life. Very unscripted. Now he's moving into public service where you can't be unscripted 24 hours, seven days a week. So he's got some key people there that are saying, look, we don't want to lose who you are, but there's got to be some guidelines and parameters. So put your thoughts down. Let's get some speeches together and then work your personality through that. And it's a growing experience for anybody who's freewheeling, accountable to no one to make this transition. And just the fact that he wants to make the transition indicates his seriousness to serve, because he doesn't have to do this. Listen to his close. Then we're going to show you a little piece of video that's very important in terms of the, the pilgrimage that Donald Trump is on. Let's look at the end of this 14-minute speech. When I see wages falling, people out of work, I know the hardships this inflicts, and I am determined to do something about it. I will do something about it. I do get things done, I will tell you. Some people have strengths, that's one of my, I get things done. I'm gonna get things done for you. Please know this, for any who are hurting, things are gonna turn around. Tomorrow will be better, it'll be much better. The pastor and I were talking about riding up the street and we see all those closed stores and people sitting down on the sidewalk and no jobs and no activity. We'll get it turned around. We'll get it turned around, Pastor. Believe me. We're going to win again as a country, and we're going to win again for all of our people. I want to work with you to renew the bonds of trust between citizens and the bonds of faith that make our nation strong. America has been lifted out of many of its most difficult hours through the miracle of faith and through people like Bishop Jackson and Dr. Jackson. So important. People have no idea how important they are. Now in these hard times for our country, let us turn again to our Christian heritage to lift up the soul of our nation. I am so deeply grateful to be here today, and it is my prayer that America of tomorrow and I mean that, that the America of tomorrow will be one of unity, togetherness, and peace. And perhaps we can add the word prosperity. Okay, prosperity. I'd like to conclude with a passage from 1 John chapter 4. You know it. <laughs> See, most groups I speak to don't know that. They're atheist but we know groups. It. If you want, we can say it together. No one has everybody. ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. And that's so true. Thank you very much. This has been such an honor. Thank you very much. Bishop, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Preach it, Brother Thank Trump. Thank you, Bishop. Preach it, Brother Trump. 
uh, at Great Faith Ministries International, Great Faith Ministries International, uh, Bishop Wayne Jackson, his wife, Dr. Beverly Jackson, they, uh, they run the operation there. Uh, very good people. And uh, they understand that this is a defining moment in, in the history of the United States, this election. And they understand that this is a very unique situation with a guy who has zero, zero political experience, elected office experience, zero. I don't know if that's ever happened in our country before. I don't think it's ever happened with a president, that's for sure. It hasn't. Zero political experience. Um, uh, they know that the, the calling to be a leader of a country is, uh, is a calling from God and that God has blessed this country. So the bishop took some time, Wayne Jackson, to pray and to fast, and he had an idea. And his idea was to, to give Donald Trump a gift. I'm just going to show you a little bit today, and we're going to pick up on it tomorrow, the significance of the two gifts that he gave Donald Trump. Let's show the, just the beginning of one of the gifts that he gave um, Donald Trump. My wife and I... Um, I want to give you something that's, that's going to be a blessing to you. Thank you. This, this is a, a prayer shawl straight from Israel. And with this prayer shawl, whenever you're, hold this for me, please. Whenever you're flying from coast to coast, I know you just came back from Mexico and and you'll be flying from city to city. There is, a, there is an anointing. The anointing is the power of God. Uh-oh, Trump is trouble. Trump is in trouble. Get the morning. All right, let me tell you what's going on here. Tomorrow on Thursday, the 8th, we'll, we'll, we'll deconstruct what's taking place there particularly from a religious perspective, because I am absolutely convinced Donald Trump doesn't have a clue as to where he set it on this pilgrimage of faith in his life. When he runs into a guy like this, who's a very serious Christian, and the guy pulls out a prayer shawl from Israel that he has prayed over and fasted over and puts on, and you'll be amazed what he says to Donald Trump. And what else he gives them? We'll show you that tomorrow. We'll spend a little time on it. But what I'd like to do to close this uh, segment out of our show today on Wednesday, the 7th, is reinforce the absurdity <laughs> that the black community is owned by Hillary Clinton and by Barack Obama to show you once again the attitude that one of the most significant black leaders ever had and has toward Barack Obama on this book close. Been um, talking down to black people on this faith base and what kind of that. See Barack, been um, talking down to black people on this faith base and what kind of that. All right, Jesse, we uh, understand what you're saying. We got the we'll meaning, Jesse. <laughs> And what, what my favorite part of that is in the real shot when the, the mic. Oh, yeah, was, he does the little knife slice. He, he goes like, he goes like that. <laughs> I mean, Jesse's been in front of so many mics. Doesn't he realize every mic is live all the time? Yeah, come on, But Jesse. that was classic. It revealed uh, a gigantic split. Now, he subsequently apologized because he had to to President Obama. But the bottom line, the takeaway is the Donald meets the Jesus in Detroit. And the black community is not monolithically democratic. Wise black people can change their mind and go toward love, fulfillment, and as Donald Trump said, prosperity. We'll see you tomorrow.